This is Rivers. He's wading through a pool of waste beneath one of the largest aquariums in the world, Georgia Aquarium. It's a filthy job, but that's not the only challenge. There's a lot of waste to manage. When this basin is full, it can hold between five to 10,000 gallons of poop that funnels here from the aquarium's habitats. And it's the culmination of many routine cleaning procedures that happen at the aquarium each week, without which the safety and health of the animals would be at risk. By the time Rivers and his team's work here is complete, the wastewater from this basin will be cleaned, filtered, and reused as top-off water for the aquarium's largest exhibit, Ocean Voyager. And the cleaning cycle will begin again. But before Rivers can do his job, several other critical procedures have to happen first. Every day, specialized teams gear up to clean the hundreds of exhibits at the aquarium. One of the first you'll see when you enter the aquarium is the sea lion exhibit, which is home to this guy, Toby, a 279 pound harbor seal. Before a team of divers can begin cleaning his habitat, Toby and the other sea lions need to vacate their pools. Staffers use this time to do their weekly weigh-ins. And if we're talking about dirty jobs, he just urinated on the scale and now we gotta clean it. Side effect of the job. This pool, it's all sea lion poop. It's all sea lion poop. Everything that she's vacuuming from here is going into that waste basin. So whatever we do in here, the LSS or life support team then has to clean up from their end. Megan Wade leads the pinnipeds team to clean the decks and assist the dive operations team as they clean the pools before guests arrive. This space is home to 14 sea lions and three harbor seals. The sea lions can eat 5% to 8% of their body weight, making the sea lion exhibit one of the dirtiest in the aquarium. Every single morning, we come in first thing and prepare their food. And this is restaurant quality fish. So they get numerous species of fish, about five different species. And every single morning, one or two people will come in and inspect every single fish. So we're looking for missing eyes, missing fins, gills, scrapes, cuts. Anywhere where you're gonna see that can breed bacteria. So that fish automatically gets sorted out and we don't use it at all. We weigh out their food into buckets and then we'll look at it again one last time before feeding it to the animals. Once a week, every Wednesday, it's Weigh Day Wednesday. Follow me this way. We have our blue scale right here and then where the green is lit up is gonna tell us how much they weigh. So each sea lion will walk from their habitat down this hallway, we'll get their weight and then they'll walk back to their habitat. After the sea lions are fed, weighed, and out of the main spaces, Megan and the team start working on cleaning the deck areas. Her team splits up between the back pools and the main gallery, where they detail every nook and cranny. As soon as you come in in the morning, you can usually smell uh, that they have been sleeping overnight. We have high up platforms that they like to sleep on, the rocks, and when you're sleeping and you don't get up to go to the bathroom, it all just sits there. So if we didn't clean every single day, it would be really stinky, kind of an ammonia smell. Also, there's fecal matter as well. We are going to detail this whole area. It gets cleaned every single day, but we detail it once a week, every week. Three male sea lions and one male harbor seal all slept out here last night, so it's probably gonna be pretty messy. The chemicals that we use are to really break up that oil that's on the surface that the sea lions secrete. So it's just soap and water. And then we'll use some chlorhexidine to disinfect the area afterwards. And then down here, Gail has a, like a nice little hand brush and she's actually doing one of the dirtiest jobs. She's cleaning the drains. All of this is gonna always be hosed to a drain away from the water the sea lions swim in. She's taking the grates off, cleaning inside the drain so that everything flows nicely each day that we clean. So the drains are part of the detailing. The removal of the net and soaking that's part of the detailing. Sea lions, when they breathe, sometimes shoot snot out of their nose. So a lot of times in sea lion habitats, you'll see brown snot on the walls. So we'll need to scrub that off too. My favorite part about cleaning the deck is 
getting to net the poop out of the water because I it just so reinforcing when you do a good job and you get good at it so I just love doing it. After Megan and the Pinnipeds team work on the main gallery deck, Alex Glick and a team of divers work on everything below deck at the sea line exhibit. Today you're going to start in pool two and then do pool three. This one's vacuuming and uh, floor scrubbing and then pool three will be vacuuming, rock work and then a final floor scrub. So we do this dive on uh, just normal scuba, even though it's uh, only an eight foot pool. We still do scuba diving so that you have freedom of movement. This is our vacuum hose. They actually plug this in in the water and we have to make a radio call to our life support system and they'll turn the vacuum on. So we drop the vacuum head in the water with the hose attached to the diver and then they will prime the hose to get all of the air out of the line. This pool, it's all sea lion poop. You want to get as much vacuumed up before you start scrubbing the floor. This scrubber is one of the key tools the divers use to thoroughly clean everything under the water. A hose pumps water through the engine, which powers the scrubber. This high-pressure water makes cleaning the floors and walls much easier. The single scrubber has hard bristles and is used for rock work, while the double brush scrubber is used to clean the walls and painted surfaces. Once she's done vacuuming, I'll give this to her and she will then clean the floor. And she's holding the trigger down and she's just swimming back and forth, doing kind of like a lawnmower motion, cleaning one side to the next to get every single inch of the pool. If she comes across an area that's particularly dirty, she might slow down and spend a little time on it to get up whatever scum is on the bottom and then move on. Animal debris doesn't just settle on the habitat's floors and surfaces. It also collects in grates and skimmer boxes. These outflows help manage waste between routine cleanings by separating animals from some of the debris. In total, it takes Alex and his team of divers roughly an hour to complete their work in both pools. On the other side of the aquarium is Ocean Voyager, the largest indoor aquatic exhibit in the United States. It holds 6.3 million gallons of water and is home to whale sharks, manta rays, and thousands of other fish. This space is largely dependent on an advanced life support and filtration system, but still relies on teams for maintenance and hands-on cleaning. In Ocean Voyager, we have two whale sharks. There's Yushan, which is the larger whale shark, and then there's Taroko. Common misconception about whale sharks would be that they're dangerous. The most intimidating thing is they're just big. They just are big, and so like if you're in the way, you just gotta move. They are not out to hurt you. Like their throat is only a, the size of a quarter. They're very, very docile creatures, and they just want to cruise along. We usually have four to eight divers in our everyday maintenance dive. We clean the windows, so we need our suction cup. We bring what we call a diaper, otherwise it just looks like a rag when we clean the acrylic windows with that. And then usually we're doing hand scrubbing. They are scrubbing off the algae, and they're kind of basically wafting off all that sand substrate that cakes on and falls over onto those rocks. All that stuff that can grow on there is potentially harmful for all the fish. So the whole goal of cleaning and upkeeping the exhibit isn't necessarily to keep it pretty, even though that is also very beneficial to keep it pretty for the guests, but at the same time, there is the purpose of doing it for the health of the exhibit. This is a monster exhibit, so if we didn't do it every day, it'd be pretty much impossible to upkeep. The blitz dives, which are our night dives, that's our essential deep clean. So it can be a couple hours long just to get everything we can done. We can run up to four of those Armada machines and clean different areas of the exhibit. While Ocean Voyager is being cleaned, Carolyn Murphy and the Aquarist team are over at the River Scout Gallery getting ready to dive into these three freshwater tanks. The smallest tanks measure four feet tall by three feet deep, and the team spends one to two hours every week cleaning the windows and maintaining the underwater gardens here. So despite the size of these tanks, we actually do manage to squeeze some people in there. What we are going to be doing is something called hookah diving. So the divers are getting in very carefully. So they're kind of sliding in the top of the tank, and they're going to be holding themselves up in the water column by pressing their feet to opposite sides of the tank or putting them on the outside of the top rim. 
and they'll kind of hold themselves with their core strain kind of up in the water column to do the work they need to do. So we're focusing on the algae that's growing on the window and the plant leaves, and then also the detritus that's building up in the tanks, and that can be fecals from fish or leftover food. The team goes into the dive with a few core tools, a scrub brush, trimming tools, and a fine plastic scraper to clean algae off the windows. The most painstaking part for the aquarists in this tank is cleaning out the beard algae. So it is so annoying and it is something that we tediously try to keep under control. So you're seeing these little kind of black puffs and that's what she's targeting right now when she's scraping it off and immediately removing it from the system because it will just spread over everything. The divers use a gravity siphon to clean out the loose debris that's settled in the gravel. This isn't powered by electricity. It relies solely on gravity to suction up and separate the waste from the gravel. Algae covering everything doesn't look great, but it also can cause problems for your fish. So algae blooms in the wild can kind of take the oxygen that the fish need out of the system. So it can cause them some harm for them that way. All the waste and debris from each of these cleanings ends up here. This is cleaned out every three to four months to ensure the basin doesn't overflow, it doesn't create water quality issues, and all the systems continue to run smoothly. As you can see, we've got just piles of poop and debris and extra food, stuff that didn't get digested properly, stuff that didn't get eaten, got pulled into filtration. Most of it is just animal waste. There is a little bit of sand, probably about 10 five gallon buckets or so. The equipment we'll use to clean the basin is a fire hose and a snow shovel. Cleaning this space takes roughly two to three hours and is done in stages. They'll remove the poop, clean the floors, and then shovel all the sand out. Once we've gotten the sand out, then we'll go around and inspect the walls, make sure there's no cracks, make sure the waterproofing is still good. So where all the discoloration happens is about where the basin gets roughly 55 to 60,000 gallons to a full basin. But other than being gross, the hardest part is definitely getting the sand out just because we've got to lift it 25 feet in the air. So we really only want to fill them about half full. Um, if they were to get too full, they might splat and they're also just really heavy. Once this basin is full, we will then recirculate all this water and clean this water to reuse it for top-off water for our Ocean Voyager exhibit. After the recovery, all this water is crystal clean. 